Welcome back to MEB. This is episode 9, Introduction to Data Modeling. Last episode, I taught you how to use linear interpolation to fill in the gaps between given data points in a table. However, I really didn't tell you the full story. Interpolation is great, but it's not perfect. The further apart the given data points are, the worse the linear approximation becomes. Take the example that we did last time. If we had fewer data points, you can see how much worse the linear interpolation would be. The need for something better is what brings me to the topic of this episode. Some chemical engineers make their whole career out of modeling data. In a nutshell, data modeling is the task of predicting the value of a dependent variable given one or more independent variables with an equation. For example, data modeling could be predicting the dependent variable of the heating value of bio oil grown from microalgae, given the independent variables of lipid, carbohydrate, and protein content of the algae species. By the way, this is one of my undergraduate research topics, and I love to talk about this. Of course, this is no small task, and for this class we will limit our considerations to a single independent variable instead of multiple. Data modelers may work from sparse experimental data because experiments may be expensive, dangerous, or time-consuming to perform. Also note that good scientific practice is to perform all experimental runs in triplicate and average the results, so something weird on a certain day doesn't skew the result. So say that you perform a series of experiments and plot your data in a scatter plot, and it ends up looking like this. It kind of looks linear, but because there is some experimental scatter, it's not perfect. So if you wanted to know the value of the dependent variable for any data point that isn't shown, you could interpolate linearly, but this looks sort of weird and non-continuous. A better choice is to fit a linear trend line to this data, for example using the method of least squares. Now I can simply use the equation of this line to obtain the value of y for any value of x that I want. All I have to do is plug it into the equation of the line. Linear trend lines are nice because there are only two parameters, slope and intercept. But of course, not all relationships between variables are actually linear. They may be quadratic, exponential, exponential decay, logarithmic, or more. For this class, we aren't going to get into all the nuances of modeling data, but the one thing I want you to know how to do is linearize a data set. This is the process of taking a relationship and algebraically manipulating it such that it resembles the y equals mx plus b form of a straight line. Perhaps this is best learned by example. Let's suppose that we wanted to model the growth of bacterial cells in a flask. Here the number of cells is the dependent variable, and time is the independent variable. To simplify analysis, we'll neglect the effects of any other independent variables, like temperature, or just assume that they're constant. Let's say that we also have three given data points. At the start, or time zero, there are 100 cells. Two hours later, there are 200 cells. And four hours total, there are 400 cells. Plotting this data regularly confirms the suspicion that bacterial growth does not seem linear. If we hypothesize the form of this equation as exponential, we have just two parameters to find, c0 and k. Clearly though, we can't determine the values of these parameters by fitting a straight line to the data in the current form. However, what if we took the natural log of both sides? Well, now we have ln of c equals kt plus ln of c0. This is the equation of a straight line in disguise. So instead of plotting the number of cells as a function of time, Let's try plotting the natural log of the number of cells as a function of time. And look at that, the data points are now on the same line. I can now look back at my linearized equation and notice that the slope of this line is just the constant k. And the intercept is the natural log of the constant c0. By calculating slope and setting it equal to k, and calculating the intercept and setting it equal to ln of c0, I can obtain the values of both parameters. Going back to the original equation, I now have an expression for the number of cells as a function of time. I can plug in any value of t that I want, and I can calculate the corresponding number of cells that I'd expect. To recap, the steps involved in data modeling by linearizing are 1. Hypothesize a general form of the equation. As an aside, in my class, the general form will usually be given to you. 2. Algebraically manipulate the equation to get it into y equals mx plus b form. 3. Plot your data points according to the y and x in the linearized form. I have quotation marks here because y and x may not be literally y and x, as we just saw. 4. Fit a linear trend line and relate the slope and intercept of the line to the parameters. 
5. Plug the parameters back into the original equation, which you may now use to confirm or predict the values of the dependent variable for any independent variable. Episode 5 Learning Objectives Now that this episode is over, you should be able to 1. Define and explain the purpose of data modeling 2. Given a data set in a hypothesized form, linearize the equation and fit a linear trend line to the data to obtain the values of any parameters. Now we'll conclude this episode. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.